Greetings, brethren, it is I, the Donkey, and I am back for German Beer Week. The last episode of this first German Beer Week. I don't know, I might have another one at some point. There are still, I think, plenty enough uh, types of beers that I could, you know, show off. But I wanted to show off on this last day the last sort of big type of beer that is very common in some parts of Germany, but not everywhere, and that is Altbier. So, in, in this particular case, Schlösser Alt. Um, Sch Altbier in general is, is one of the things. It, it, literal translation for it is just old beer, and the reason this exists is that I before explained that um, all the lager type of beers that come from South Germany and Bohemia, they weren't really that easy to make before about 1870 something when the uh, cooling machine was invented. So before that, they were very local and it took forever for them to spread around Germany. Um, and before they became a thing, I don't know, when, when was that, like, uh, probably 1700s, maybe even 1600s, but I, I'm not honestly sure about that. Um, but before they became popularized, um, there was an old, you know, way of brewing beer, always using the top fermentation, um, because that doesn't require the same cooling that the low fermentation uh, yeast requires. And... Um, in types of, of Germany, or in, in places of Germany, where the new way of brewing the beer uh, only took root very, very slowly, they basically called lagers new beer, and they called what they always drank old beer. So that's where that name comes from. It's not really particularly clever, or um, you know, has any has any big reasons behind it. It's just how they used to brew beer before. And then the new types of beer, the lager beers, came in and took over. And nowadays, uh, wherever you go, except for very, very, very small pockets uh, within Germany, Pilsner is the most popular one, and lager beers in general are also more popular. There are some places, um, for example, Düsseldorf, um, they are still all about Altbier. But that's one of the only places where it really is that big. In most other places, you can get it, uh, in North Germany at least. But it's not as popular. Uh, even in, in North Germany, in, in vast parts of North Germany, Pilsner and uh, other Lagerbiers have taken over at this point. So, let's have a pour in our mug. And as you can see, the first thing is... That it is much darker than a lager. But it does yield a good crown. It's not very um it's not very not a very fine crown, but that may also be my, my pouring technique. I'm not entirely sure. Uh this is a crown that's gonna disappear very quickly. Again, that may very well be up to me being not very good at pouring this, because honestly. I can't remember when I last had an Altbier. So there you go. It might be a long, long time ago. Okay, smell-wise, not too different from just your average... Your, uh, your average sort of um, heavier um, uh, a pale lager. Perhaps going a little bit toward sort of a... Uh, a Lund beer or like an ale type deal. So that's kind of what I'm expecting taste wise as well. Let's have a try. Okay. Mm, yeah, that, that, okay. So the, the first thing that, that this reminds me of actually is um, historical beer recreations. So I used to do, when I was much younger, uh, I am an old man after all. Uh, and when I was much younger, I used to do uh, historical reenactment, mainly um, of the early medieval period and uh, then later of the uh, Renaissance period. So, Vikings and Landsknechte. 
And um, we used to do sort of, or not we, but some people within those groups were always really fascinated with all the different types of uh, alcohol that they would have had back then. And uh, so there was a lot of, um, you know, historical recreation brewing going on in various types. Some beer, uh, some mead, and then Braggit, which is, um, it's a beer, but it's, it has honey in the, in the malt, uh, in the Maisha. Um, I still, I should, I really should look up what that's called in English. The, the, the stuff, the, the cooking stuff where you put the malt in and you have your water and you have your hops and you, you boil that shit, right? That's, that's what I'm talking about. That stuff that has honey in it. And that creates, uh, what's called Braggit. And, um, taste wise, it's, it's really hard to describe. It's kind of like an ale, but it has those sort of those mead notes in there. So it's kind of, it has a bit of, it has something a bit of a wine. Uh, if you've ever had a barley wine, which is a, a, a kind of a strong beer, uh, that's kind of brewed a little bit more like a wine. Um, it's kind of going in that direction, but it has those honey notes. It's really interesting. It's a, it's a really interesting beer. But anyway, I was, I was specifically talking about the uh, historical beers. This reminds me a lot of those. So that obviously makes sense. You know, it's old beer. It's from, you know, before um, the, the lager beers took over. Uh, this particular brewery has only been going since, only been going since 1873, uh, which, you know, all things considered, not that long ago. But um, that definitely means that this isn't like one of the really old types. You know, I'm, I'm sure there are Altbiers out there that have been going for five, six hundred years. Uh, and I would really be interested to try those, I must say, because this is really interesting. It's, it's um, how do I describe this? It's really good, for one. It's, um... Uh, it's really close to, or similar, I should say, to the Landbier that I talked about on Monday, the first episode of the German Beer Week, where it's very, it's still mild. It it doesn't, it's not aggressive. It's not overly bitter like a, a like a Pilsner. It's not. It doesn't have the the overly annoying acidity or um, the, the acrid aftertaste that you get from an IPA sometimes, or that I also got from the Kölsch, which I didn't like. Um, it's a lot more sort of a that sounds mean, but you know we call that a Bauern beer as well, a, a peasant's beer, where it's just kind of it, it it tastes like the kind of beer that your friend would make in his garage. And that's not, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I actually, I actually think that's a good thing. I, I like those sort of really traditional and personal types of beers that are, you know, that are just um, not as commercialized and maybe not as refined. I, I think some, you know, unrefined characteristics and some uh, um, irregularities with the beer is really interesting. I find that a lot more interesting than, you know, I mean, let's, let's be reasonable, right? The most commercialized and purest forms of beer that ends up being something like Heineken or Bex. And that's just not that good. You know, that's just, it has all the character taken out of it. So having character in it is actually a good thing. And in this case, this has a lot of character. It's very savory, but it has that, it's distinct from a Pilsner in that it isn't crazy on the bitterness. So it it has the same sort of savory notes that you would get from a Pilsner, but it is it is a lot closer to a pale lager in terms of how bitter it is. So the hop flavor is there, but it doesn't come through as much on the, you know, it, it doesn't like coat your entire mouth and you taste nothing but bitter hops for the rest of the day. It, it just, it kind of goes away quickly, which is really nice. I didn't actually look how much alcohol this has. Uh, 4.8. Alright, so that's not that bad. It's, um, it's on the lower end, I would say, for a German beer. Um, but it's really tasty. I'm, I'm really 
really enjoying this, I must say. For a beer that is really not available here very much, um, it's actually quite good. And I, I, you know, I honestly think that this... People would enjoy this locally. I think they would. Because it's not... You, you see, the, you know, when I talked about the Kölsch, I think the biggest problem with that is just um, because people here in my region, you know, in middle southern Germany, we really enjoy our drinking beers. We like just drinking, you know, it, it doesn't have to be super fancy. That's fine. It's as long as it's, it's a good drinking beer, we're happy. And this is a good drinking beer. Now, with these kinds of beers, I'm never entirely sure how impactful that's going to be because um, if you remember the Bock episode that I that I did where I drank a uh, Rosé Bock and a Doppelbock, the next day was kind of... Uh, I actually had a bit of a headache and a bit of a hangover. Not bad, but it was there and those kind of heavier beers, they, they, they tend to do that and it, it's not necessarily purely based on the alcohol percentage. It's also sometimes just the characteristics of the beer. And this is one of those beers where I feel like if I got drunk off of this, I would have a horrible hangover. But it is a nice beer. I'm really enjoying this. Um, would it replace my, my sort of normal choices? No, absolutely not. Uh, because one thing that, that this, that I can already tell about this is it's, it doesn't hold its carburation very well. So that was also evidenced by the big bubbles in the foam. It just kind of loses that very quickly. It, it you know, it goes stale pretty quickly, more like an ale would. Um, but with an ale, I find that isn't so much of a problem. Um, but with something that is a bit more, well, for lack of a better descriptor, German tasting, because this does still have very similar notes to a Pilsner. It's just, you know, much milder in terms of the bitterness. And, but, car but otherwise, it's, it's similar. So it feels weird that, it, you know, that, it, that the carburation went so quickly. Super easy to chug as well, though. But it, that was necessary. I had to get rid of it because the carburation would have would have been entirely gone, and I don't think that would have been very pleasant. So, all in all, I'm actually surprised. Um, it has been a very very long time since I had an Altbier. Honestly, I couldn't even really remember what they would be like. Uh, but yeah, it's very nice. It's um, I would say. You know what, I think I would give this a solid 6.5 out of 10. Maybe even encroaching, encroaching toward a 7 out of 10. It's, it's really very, very pleasant. Very pleasant to drink. Um, it doesn't linger too much. Not, after the chugging, there's a bit more of the, the bitterness still um, in the back of my throat. But it's really not that bad. And it's overall, it's just enjoyable. So yeah, pretty decent. 6.5. If I was a bit more generous today, I might say seven, but no, I don't feel I don't feel particularly generous today. So we'll stick with the six point five. <laughs> I still think it's very much uh, worth trying. Um, so if you're ever in the region of Düsseldorf, or you know more rural regions in North Rhine-Westphalia, or uh, um, you know Lower Saxony, uh, stuff like that, you know the upper regions of Germany then give Altbier a try, if you can find it. Um, I'm sure there are other brands. This is one of two that they had at my giant beer market. So, uh, I don't know. I'm sure there's more in the area where this is popular, around this All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful evening, and uh, please come back on another day for another beer. But then we are done with German Beer Week for now. I'm sure I'll return to it later, and I hope you learned lots of stuff about German beers. Take care, guys.